Hey folks, my name is Suds. And I'm Nikki. Welcome to Zero Calorie Marketing. Tune in to listen to us speaking to some of the most innovative, brilliant, open-minded marketers we know. Each episode features a different marketeer with a unique perspective on marketing, branding, life philosophy and everything in between. Lend us your eyes and ears for the next hour or so as we discover more about the person and also the unique path that they took which led them to where they got to. And the real story behind the why, where, when and how they do what they do. Without a further ado, let's get to it. Hey folks, my name is Suds, co-host of Zero Carry Marketing. Today we're joined by Christina Pichalis, who is the founder of Content UK, the UK's foremost community for content marketers. She has six years of content marketing experience for companies such as Soldo, Hubbub, Fundraising, Grizzle, Gecko Board, and she's super keen to support others who are looking to move their careers within content marketing. As an entrepreneur, I take my hat off to my today's guest, simply because she had the courage to back herself as an entrepreneur and leave her role at a time of great uncertainty and actually make things happen within this new community. Not only did she see an opportunity, but she thought, you know what, now's the best time to do it. So I have a lot of respect for our guest today. There is a saying, growth happens at the end of your company zone and these are the kind of things that you may see on I know Instagram quotes or these kind of daily platitudes but our guest lives and breathes this so I'm super excited to learn understand and really get some insider tips from our guest Christina welcome to the show thank you for having me Sats it's almost like we'd rehearse that isn't it <laughs> bit of deja vu there deja it's, almost, vu. it's almost um, like we played did this interview without recording before <laughs> oh my gosh. So we did a 15 minutes worth of chat and I stupidly realized I hadn't put the record button. See, this is what happens when I don't have Nikki, the co-host. Nikki, I need you. I need you to come back. Nikki's not in today, but she will be in for the other episodes. Yeah, we were such in such a good flow as well. And Hopefully we can replicate that. You know, if we can get one tenth of that magic, I'll we'll be happy. Christina, tell us what is Content UK? So Content UK is a community for for content marketers that are in the UK and it comes in the form of a close-knit Slack community so fellow content marketers can share advice and support other people with their roles both in-house and freelance and also there's the an education element where we have lots of webinars and Q&As and chats about specific content topics so yes a community for UK content marketers. Just a bit of background for the listeners. I actually discovered Christina's uh, company because we had, I was doing a course with a guy called Ollie Meekins, who does uh, Roast My Landing Page. And he was one of your guests, I, really, I think, on one of your early webinars or early talks. I was really taken aback because you knew what you're talking about. You knew your audience inside out. Ollie himself is, you know, he knows his, uh, he knows his shit. And I, I was really like, kind of like, there's two people who knew what they were talking about and... I was really engaged with your talk and it kind of inspired me to reach out to you to get you on, on as a guest. I think that you had ignored my couple of emails, but I don't mind it because I'm, I'm glad that you're here. And I have been following your progress through LinkedIn as well as on socials as, you know, anyone who's in content that I would highly, highly recommend they subscribe to your newsletter. Even though it's not relevant for me, I really find it very engaging because you know what you're talking about and the people that you have on in a weekly basis uh, or people that you feature or interview you they know their shit so i actually it's one of the few few newsletters I actually read from top to toe so Thank um you. and i actually look forward to reading it. and i actually you know not many times i actually do this but i actually i think i i, I write to say oh this is a really good newsletter you know good stuff so yeah I, that is me thank you <laughs> i want to get straight to it you left a super secure role you know paying monthly wages that kind of thing to set up Content UK at a time of probably the most uncertain time that, you know, we've had in certainly my lifetime and in probably most people's lifetime. What made you want to want to do that? Yeah, so I did leave my job at an uncertain time, but I think it's worth noting that when I did make the jump, I had taken a lot of risk factors into consideration. So I had a pot of savings. I'm living at home with my parents. So I had like a runway of about six months if Content UK completely failed and a, and a backup plan to get contract work if I could see things aren't you know picking up. So I, I wouldn't advise anybody to just quit their job and jump on an idea. And I'd been building Content UK as a free community for over a year before I tried to monetize it as well. So it's worth, worth noting that. And then I was working on it, trying to monetize it after work on weekends consistently for quite a few months before I then made that leap. You know, that's amazing in terms of 
I mean, you know, a lot of people I, I speak to, consultants and people within my circle, even with that, they would still be very reluctant to pull the trigger. Have you always had that kind of entrepreneurial kind of flair or how was that something that you, what was the inspiration for wanting to do something on your own? Something I've always loved the idea of, even like my first job was a startup because I found the world of building a business. So when I joined the first company I worked at, I, there was, I was the seventh employee and I was always fascinated by the idea of building something from nothing and I'd read like all those startup -y sort of books like the Tim Ferriss for our work week and all those sort of things so yeah, it was always something in the back of my mind that I wanted to yeah. do but I hadn't didn't have an idea for quite a long time or know how to implement it in terms of you know like were your family and friends supportive of this you know and how did you you know, what was their first reaction when you said, hey, you know, I'm leaving this to do something that I've been creating by myself? You know, you de-risked it yourself. I guess there was a lot of element of, you know, this is something new that I'm doing. How did you overcome that? And what was the reaction of your fan friends and family? Reaction of friends and family. I don't think they were too surprised because they know that's something I'm just always interested in, in doing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are like, oh, why, why are you leaving your job during a pandemic? But mm -hmm. um, I think they know it's something that I'm passionate about weren't overly surprised because I'm always always talking about the world of startups and entrepreneurship and trying to create a way of making money where I don't have a boss that's always something I've always wanted to do you know you do have like a background on this you know like when I was professionally researching stroke stalking you mm -hmm. you'd written a post a few years ago on medium which was lessons learned from failing to be become a freelancer mm. if you could go back and revise that what would you change now I wouldn't actually change anything because that was a really good experience to go through that failure and I learned a lot but what happened then was yeah I quit my job to try and become a freelancer and it took me over six seven months to get a client yeah I was very naive to going up how how you go about getting clients I hadn't yeah if I could go back to that person trying to do freelancing for the first time I would have advised myself to keep my job and try and get some clients on the side initially mm -hmm. build up a profile you know prioritize getting a portfolio before just just leaving and going out there on a on my own and, and to build up a bit of a personal brand which I didn't have at all then how did it feel like when you were like month three into you know that six month you know how did you keep yourself going it didn't feel good you just I, at that point I'd lost all my confidence really I was still plodding along but wasn't really believing in what I was doing yeah I think when you when you hit a few months of not getting work your confidence does go down quite a lot you know as as any business entrepreneur we vouch you know like uncertainty and also the ability to keep yourself going is probably the toughest thing that you'll ever get over what advice would you give someone who may be going through that journey right now you know in terms of okay you know maybe they've been uh let go or you know maybe they've been um you know they said okay fine you know I want to go from a role into being a freelancer what would, advice would you give them to keep themselves going firstly it's not going to be easy and they should be kind to themselves it's just in and of itself a really really tricky thing when you haven't got a role and you're you're trying to apply for things and you're not getting anywhere but some like practical stuff it's like give yourself set hours where you're going to be trying to look for work so don't you know maybe yeah, a few hours a day where you're applying but then give yourself a break after that point so you're not just viciously perpetuating that cycle but then give yourself like a, a number of things that you're going to apply for a day focus on building a portfolio to prove mm. your work show people that you trust yeah, be, be okay to show people that you trust your cv and your applications perhaps help improve like ask for help basically to, to help improve what you're doing ask people that do like you like what not that like you that you've worked with like what are mm. your traits what's to sort of when you're in a confidence drought other people can see what your positive attributes are more than you sometimes um, mm. get references off of them yeah this was kind of like a brain dump of, of random ideas there no this is really interesting. Things, things are really helpful just making sure that you're practical but like, like trying to do things for self-care every day as well exercise setting yourself boundaries i want to explore this more maybe later on in terms of there's two challenges that you faced i guess one was going from a role within a company to setting up Yes, you had some traction and you had a community, but could you tell us a bit, bit more about the first person who signed up to Content UK and how did that make you feel? Got that first confirmation email say, yep, the money, someone's actually paid to be a member, you know? Well, the first one was kind of like, uh, it was like a mate who's also building a business, uh, James McKinvin. I was having a call with him because I was struggling to get the first customers. I was like, oh my God, no one's going to sign up. And then he paid while we we're on the call. So that was oh, the first shout one. Shout out to James. <laughs> Thanks, James. I don't know if it was 
yeah, if it was him just uh, just being kind or he wanted to join, but he's still in the community, so he must like it. <laughs> but then when I got the first actual customer, um, it was somebody I wasn't expecting that hadn't ever engaged in the Slack community. They were kind of just quietly, must have been quietly enjoying the content and the webinars. Um, so to see that come through was it was like yeah it's the best feeling in the world when there's something you've been plugging away at for a long time and you don't know if people are going to pay Uh, especially because a lot of these people had been in the community for free for some for like a year and then I really didn't know if they'd want to pay when I transitioned that to no I I think your community is very valuable and it's something anyone in content marketing should definitely definitely join because you are an insider who is talking to her peers and anyone who's seen any of your videos knows that you know you know what you're talking about how do you keep learning from your peers has there been you know during your journey something that you hadn't expected to come across and how do you have that feedback loop to keep yourself learning how do I continue learning from my peers yeah I I love learning from them it's just really fun having a topic I want to learn about and then being able to interview an expert on that topic and just just learn about so many different things really love doing that and sort of listening to common challenges that the community are having and then getting somebody in to teach us all about that I love that some of the challenges I face the one of the biggest things I struggle with is as a paid community so you have to pay to get the the value it's sort of showcasing to people who aren't in the community yet that it is valuable before they join so I'm always experimenting with doing free trials I turn them on and then I turn free trials on and off I'm currently trying something where it's like a 30 day, 30 days of content challenge mm. where people can just join for 30 days and we're going to try and build a content creation habit together. Just finding, mm. yeah, but the biggest challenge is just finding ways to show people the value before they're proper members. And that's always a juggling act. So almost like giving them a taste of what they can expect before they kind of take the plunge. Yeah, it's a very fine balance because there's a part of me that always just wants to just have all the webinars for free and everyone can join for free but then why would you become a member from what you've mentioned before you know like I think you mentioned to me that you have a very low churn rate but it's just getting them through the door which is being the biggest challenge is that something that you're going to be trying to address for the your biggest challenge for 2021 or what are the other things that you're doing I definitely need to ramp up that side of things sure so yeah as I mentioned there's that the challenge that's launching on Monday content tell us more tell us more Uh, yes it's 30 days of content you sign up the first cohort is going to be free one as I was just testing the waters but you commit every day for 30 days to working on content but we've got for habits to set we know that accountability public accountability really helps with things like that so there's like a Slack channel where we'll all be sharing every day our progress. There's like a, a habit tracker where you can sort of tick each day as you're going along, whether you did it. Uh, and then we've got like a goal setting workshop to help sort of set your goals, midpoint check in, and then at the end of check in. So I was just sort of orchestrated this challenge with to really help people to actually stick to creating content for 30 days and not just like leaving someone by themselves to do it and then not so yeah that's something so something like that that's something I'm trying to sort of bring people into the community and then they'll get something valuable and if they like it whilst they're doing the challenge they can stick around longer but then other things that I do want to be trying to sort of help is I guess more syst- everything's been quite organic so I guess mm. more systematically looking at lead generation and outreach that's something I haven't I guess I don't like it much but mm. I think I might have to do stuff like that I think to, to help I'd be super keen to learn how you get on with that. Just changing topic slightly, mm. um, you are quite a big reader and yeah. anyone you know who follows you on socials knows that you're probably reading two or three books at the same time. Well, that's the impression I get. What has been some of your favourite reads, it could be fiction and non-fiction, in the last year or so? I know that's a big question, but I want to just... Oh, let okay. You. I really enjoy the last year or so. The One Thing, I forgot who that's by... Uh, but it's really about just focusing your mind on just doing like the one most important thing every day that's going to push you towards your your goals. Um, mm. I just found that whole framework very useful as somebody who's quite an overthinker and always has a million ideas going on at once. I really enjoyed that book. Oh gosh, what else have I read? My mind's gone blank. I can't think. <laughs> There's loads of good books, but I can't can't think of it. Oh, the, in terms of fiction, The Midnight Library by uh, Matt Haig. Just a really nice, I think it's a good pandemic book. It's a very positive Mm. message about being appreciative of the life that you've got now. It's just that's a cute book. What's been the most influential book that you've ever read? The most influential was definitely, probably a bit dated now, but uh, The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss for me. Because at the time, I thought the pathway to getting money and getting a job is like you, you just get a job, work your way up. 
the career ladder and that's it. And it was mm. never excited me. But when I read this book about how you can get money from the value you make, not just your time, you can make money on your own terms. And mm. it was like, wow, this is such an amazing concept. That's the life I want to have. That's amazing. <laughs> uh, so at the time, it was to my young brain, like very, very pivotal. I was hoping that you'd mention that because I think that was one of the a screenshots that you had on Twitter, it was like four hour work week. And I think it was White Teeth by Zadie Smith and a couple of other books. And you'd put the challenge out to say, what are you currently reading? And I actually had a tweet lined up to respond to you, but I'm going to do that after this, uh, after this talk. <laughs> um, in terms of like, you mentioned you're an overthinker. Does that become better over the year? over the years or do you become do you have tactics to kind of overcome that so I have tactics to overcome that. yeah I go through go through waves so if I was left to my own devices yeah I get overthink get overwhelmed that's my natural like say but things that I've been doing like this recently that I'm in like a good good track at the moment of, of like mm-hmm. getting up meditating for 15 minutes and having my phone off for like the first few hours of the day mm-hmm. uh, and then trying to jump straight into a focused bit of work for a couple of hours or then going into social media and all those things that that's been really useful and then at the end of the day sort of setting out for tomorrow what main things I should be doing the next day it's just sort of get, having that structure in place really helps let's say you were working for a company has the approach that you're taking to your work changed or you know like now that you know you're your own boss how do you think about what you do during the day versus what you're doing when you're working for someone else yeah it's something I'm learning as I'm going it's sort of acting like a boss to myself and giving mm. myself structure yeah because when you have got a boss they you sort of know what the goals are they're mm. telling you what to work on that but yeah that's been a bit different trying to adapting I think setting myself goals in terms of you know like there is this kind of we're kind of going through massive changes I don't want to go into that because everyone's been everyone sort of talks about it how do you see content changing in the next not changing what will content marketers be working on in the next mm. year two years post pandemic post pandemic well i think people are now doing more online things even though the pandemic will finish but they're already in the rhythm now of learning how to be good video editors create good video content podcasting audio content marketers being forced to become experts in these sort of things so i think that trend will continue after the pandemic as well so yeah more video more audio and in terms of you know your direction you know i know that you've got the slack channel and you've got your online community email and you're also uh, putting out videos what's been working for you what's the best medium that's been working for you so far my favorite ones is doing webinars like live mm. webinars i really enjoy that the element of learning from an expert but then the mm. live side of it where people that are watching can just directly ask questions to the ex- expert in the moment and then mm. once that's finished you can then use that webinar to repurpose it into snippets and mm. I put it into like a, a learning hub for members to then watch the recording and mm. then make notes from that so I just like all the good stuff that can come from video live video do you have someone helping you with creating and you know kind of repurposing all this content or do you get uh do you tend to get involved you know do you do that all yourself at the moment at the moment it's just me i'd love to get some support at hmm. some stage but it doesn't make sense in terms of uh the income i'm making at the moment yeah. from it, but that would be that would be cool to get some help at some point <laughs> so. you know like what would be your goal and ambition for content uk you know how do you see this will what would be your dream in a way for for your company to be the go-to place that all content marketers go to learn and connect with other people in their craft. Um, so that, that comes in the form of courses about different content topics, big conferences. Yeah, that's kind of the goal of it, to just be like the, the UK's biggest community of content marketers, all while being a really friendly vibe throughout all that. <laughs> I know that we spoke about this before I had forgotten to press the record button. <laughs> You have a quite a unique way of onboarding your members. Could you tell us a bit more about that? You know, like I sign up to Content UK. What's the first thing that happens? Yeah, you sign up to Content UK and I'll invite you into Slack community and the members area. And most importantly, if you want one, I have a, a one-to-one call with you. So that, you know, they have that kind of one-on-one relationship with you, the founder of the company, uh, the community, so that they feel connected and they feel like they're being listened to. Yeah, I really want to get to know like what, why are they joining? What do they want to learn about? What are mm. their expertise? What sort of work are they looking for? Just to really understand that person, try and make them mm. feel welcome and then make sure that they are introduced in the Slack community, encourage them to join. We've got a coffee chat channel where you'll randomly get matched to a person in the community every couple of weeks. So encourage them to, to join that so they can get to know others as quickly as possible. Because um, before this, this 
your community was actually an offline community, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Could you tell us, you know, what that actually entailed? Yeah, so it started off at June 2019 as a pub meetup. So as mm. a content marketer myself, I didn't really know that many content marketers in the UK or London. There was like mm. a big US community of content marketers, but not mm. as much in the UK. So it started off with me putting a post on like LinkedIn and Twitter asking if any UK or London content marketers wanted to meet up at the pub. So about seven of us turned up in this pub in Houston for the first one. So oh, those my- days. <laughs> those days. Yeah, the, in the pub days, can't wait for those to return. Uh, and it was really nice just speaking with other people that had similar roles and challenges. Um, mm. So oh, let's, let's do another one next month. And then it became this monthly pub meetup. And then we uh, mm. set up a Slack community so that we could stay in touch mm. after the pub meetups. It was really fun. I mean, I guess it kind of, happened organically where I guess the first batch of people were people that you knew personally and then maybe the second time they would bring in people they knew because I was looking through the Twitter channel that you've got and you know you've got a quite a good community of people who professionals who are looking to connect with others and you know that's the kind of impression I get how did you kind of facilitate that yeah I know that you're big on community but what tip would you give to someone who's trying to do something similar so someone's trying to do something similar just focus on getting like four people at your first meetup like that's that's all you need. How you can do that is there will already be communities of some extent where those people mm. are hanging out. So just mm. post in all of those. So I, I did like a tweet, a LinkedIn, posted mm. in like five Slack groups. Might have put it on Eventbrite as well. Yeah, I put it on Eventbrite as well. So just think of all the places that you can put, but set yourself a target of four people mm. turning up. One-to-one message, a whole load of people that you can think of as well. And if you do all of those things, you should get those four people that rock up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I can't wait for the days that we could go into a meetup and, you know, meet some like really like-minded people, but also meet like weird people as well. You know, there's always one or two really (laughs) people who just, you know, I'd be like, I'd go to like an investor meeting or I'd go to like a content video production kind of content meeting. And, you know, you'd have some like, who's okay, you know, I directed this uh, thing for john lewis and you know i did this and then uh, and there would be someone who's like i just saw it i was free and i thought i'd come along and and they're like uh, you know i'm like what do you do and he's like well, I'm, a, I'm like a tutor i was like okay <laughs> you know <laughs> i i miss that you know like i would think oh my god th- there's always one weird person but you know these days it you know how i wish i i'd meet some weird people you know um, sometimes i would be like yeah you know whatever <laughs> Uh, Because I I think there's a thing where if you don't know who the weird person is within the meeting, then you are it, you know? (laughs) Okay, so going back to going right to this, I want to talk to you about something serious. Imposter syndrome is almost like every single person I meet, including founders of very established businesses. You know, there's a friend of mine who's a marketing manager and, you know, she has lots of self-doubt about what she does. And also I have a friend who's a very successful business person but you know he has lots of self doubt people outside don't see that but he you know when when i when you talk to him on a personal level you know you see that he kind of has these things and i know that you mentioned that you is something that you go through and something that you have an ongoing challenge with how have you overcome it or you know not overcome it but how do you deal with it yeah that's imposter syndrome something thing yeah as you say a lot of people battle with and i'm always battling with like content uk because i think well i'm getting invited onto podcasts and things and lots of people reaching out to me but I'm sort of very early on in my journey companies not making that much money it just doesn't feel like i don't feel like a business person for example so that's always going through my head at the moment but it, earlier on yeah i felt like an imposter syndrome as a content marketer and felt really scared about doing things like public speaking that really really scared me because I didn't feel like I was an expert enough so like last year oh I've lost track now which year, which year we're on but uh, year before, <laughs> 2019 yeah. <laughs> I, I really wanted to sort of like really face that sort mm. of fear of public speaking and feeling like mm. an imposter so I sort of forced myself to do a, a talk well it was for a content UK I sort of organized mm. an event I forced myself to do a talk and signed up for improv classes Ooh, interesting. Uh, <laughs> and a confidence workshop uh, yeah. by Kirsty Hulse. I know Kirsty. Yeah, she, she's cool. And then she later did a webinar for Content UK for yes, about, yes. about imposter syndrome. But yeah. yeah, I sort of went to one of her events, her workshops, then did improv. So I did all these things to like actually tackle this feeling of imposter syndrome head on and then did a talk after a, a lot of that stuff. So my thinking on imposter syndrome is kind of, feel uh, cliche but feel the fear and 
do it anyway. <laughs> anyway, yeah, you know, it's something everyone goes through. And to be honest with you, my biggest challenge at the moment is putting stuff on LinkedIn that mm-hmm. I'm, you know, I'm qualified to talk about, but it just feels like, oh, you know, maybe someone's going to judge this judge me and mm-hmm. i had a chat with this uh, these couple of guys who are li- linkedin kind of experts or linkedin whisperers I-, I guess and they just said look just do it you know that's encouraged me to start putting stuff out there and one thing i'm doing with my colleague is we've set a goal no matter what i come up with some content for linkedin every week mm-hmm. and i've set myself a calendar time to say okay i'm going to update something whatever's in my mind i'll put out there surprising to say it's been pretty good so far actually in terms of how well it's been received and it's stuff that i've it comes straight from the heart in terms of this is what i really believe mm-hmm. rather than writing in the genre of linkedin where i'm crushing it it's more like here's what i've seen and here's what i've learned from my journey so far i'm challenging myself to do more of that for this year which is 2021 <laughs> like, i love that i like the authenticity of how you're approaching that you just you're doing what what's human to you yeah uh, you know people probably resonate more with that thing is like you and i probably have this thing where someone comes to you and says okay what kind of content should i create you can probably have a list of hundreds say these are the things that you can talk about where sometimes when it comes to creating content for myself or my kind of personal brand it's like oh I have an emotional attachment to it which Mm. kind of makes me reluctant to put it out there whereas I know that if I was consulting myself then I would say this is what you should talk about because this is what people will find interesting again it's like an ongoing thing where I'm trying to get over that for myself Mm. another serious topic I want to go oh well actually firstly secondly tell us a bit more about the improv workshop that you did it was a course it was three courses so that's by a company called Hoopla yeah the first course is completely for anyone that's not done any improv any acting whatsoever and it's eight weeks two out every week you're just with like a same group of strangers about 10 of you and you'll be like given a word and you have to act as a certain character and just say whatever comes to your mind it's really hard to explain it but you're just mm. you're basically forced into doing really weird um, things on the spot without getting a chance to think so it literally oh, wow. it switches off overthinking if that makes sense yeah um, do you think your cypriot background or that kind of Mediterranean uh, influenced your improv you know do you, could you get angry at a drop of a hat and everyone would be like oh my god that's 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 amazing acting and you're like no this is just me <laughs> I've been to Greece I know what people are like they do get angry quite easy it's Cy- Cyprus Cyprus uh, yeah Cyprus. yeah they are very emo- naturally uh very uh wear their heart on their sleeves I don't think I have that trait too much <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's, know, those are the ones you should got to watch out for more, you know like <laughs> You know, I've been, a friend of mine actually is an improv guy. Uh, his day job, he's like a finance, serious finance person. But I think he improv lets him actually be himself uh, or actually explore a side of his personality that he doesn't really get to express within his day-to-day job. Going back from something that improv to another serious topic, mm-hmm. burnout. Mm-hmm. I feel like I, I can talk to you about this because we're kind of in the same age range and we probably have the same kind of issues that we've faced through our careers. Could you tell us about, you know, like burnout? And if you've experienced it or what your experience of it has been from your side. I had a lot of the burnout symptoms or getting close to lots of exhaustion when I was trying to mm. build Content UK whilst doing my full time job for about mm. five months because I had a high pressure job that was, you know, very intense in and of itself. And then I was getting up really early to work on Content UK. After work, I'd work on it sometimes till like the early hours of the morning and then mm. get up to work again weekends and when you're just going into that cycle too many days in a row yeah it can really begin to affect your mental state and just you, you can very easily stop giving yourself self-care so yeah something I definitely experienced as I was transitioning content trying to be much more mindful of that now that I'm not working full-time has that improved since you've stepped away from you know doing two roles at the same time and you know focusing more just on your current company yeah, like uh, massively. I still get get stressed and get can get mm. exhausted, and some of those things can pe- come into play. But I don't have that full time job, so if I'm like, I need to take today off, mm. I can I'll, I can do that. Whereas before, that was a lot harder when I was committing to a company. You mentioned you have like a morning routine where you get up and do meditation, mm. have your phone switched off. Do you tend to work like set hours, or do you tend to sometimes? just go with the flow how do you what does your typical day look like as um someone who's growing a company typical day at the moment because I'm in a good rhythm it's yeah I I don't I'm not setting an alarm clock so I just get up naturally walk my dog meditate (laughs) um and then I'll try and as I said my phone is off at this point Mm. 
and then I try and jump into like a big important task for a couple of mm. hours before mm. then turning on the the noise of emails, social media, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But yeah. if I start late, I will maybe finish a bit later. So I'm quite flexible on like. You know, like, let's say this is three years in the future. How do you see yourself and your company at that time? In three years time? Oh, just we're, we're a lot bigger. We offer training to companies that have content marketers. That's the first thing they think of is Content UK. So we can train up content marketers. We've just got very massive community conferences, bigger meetups, and just a lot of happy content people in the community and more in-person stuff. Good. In terms of, you know, like we get, all sorts of listeners or you know we're, we're talking to cmos and you know lots of companies as well as b2b as well as b2c companies um what are you looking for at the moment that would really help you uh just to sort of put out there into the universe if someone's listening and they could help you with something what would that be oh that's a good question to get let the content marketers that they know about Content UK. I was just going to ask you, how can people get hold of you? So yeah, they can get hold of me. I'm on Twitter at Christina underscore P and find out more about Content UK over at contentuk.co. To be honest, from an outsider's perspective, I'm really happy that I discovered your community. And also you've grown it from strength to strength. Your newsletters are one of the few newsletters I genuinely look forward to and i actually read everything from the top to the bottom because you know like we work with content managers or you know content folks on a day-to-day basis so it kind of helps me keep a tab of what you do so i'm really happy about that also as a entrepreneur i'm actually very curious to see how you will grow your community as well as content uk as a business so that's something i'll be keeping an eye on and of course if there's anything i can help you with i will I'll try and put you in touch with some people I know or, you know, just keep in contact with you. I think we'd love to catch up with you in the future just to see what you've done, uh, follow your journey from the startup to, you know, where you you will be going in the future. People can get hold of, what's the website? Contentuk.co. It's basically a place for content, anyone in content who's looking to grow, build a relationship with, as well as learn from other, uh, as well as learn from peers. From my side, thank you very much for joining us. Christina. Thank you so much, Suds. It's been really good being on here thank you for the the kind words about the community and the newsletter it's really nice of you no it's it, to be honest with you you know it's very genuine the way you've approached it and i think it's very authentic and something that's you know very much lacking in the world of tech and you know SaaS and you know anyone within content you know it's kind of very impersonal whereas your community is very you know it's, you feel like it's very human and you feel like you're part of a community even when you put stuff out there on twitter it feels like you're speaking to someone rather than trying to just get everyone in so that's what i would say it's refreshing to see that from my from my perspective thank you very much and we will hopefully see you soon thanks lads. hope you enjoyed this episode and don't forget to listen to other episodes of zero calorie marketing podcast if you have a minute do leave us a review on whichever platform you happen to be enjoying this episode we'd love to hear from our listeners so drop us a message with guest suggestions thoughts on the episodes and even compliments at zcm at interestingcontent.co.uk 